Hi there. Sometimes you can find yourself working in the scene with too many objects in it. So you might want to hide some of them to make the scene appear less cluttered. And in this video, I'm going to show you the multiple ways you can do that. Let's start with hiding objects on the tracks. One of the fastest ways would be to hide the track on which the object is located. You can find the tracks menu next to the timeline. Click on the plus icon to expand the grouped tracks. You can also click this button here to automatically adjust the tracks width so the names would be visible. If you use the quick rigging tool to set up your character, it will automatically create a set of tracks for various body parts. You can check the box under the eye icon for any track which will effectively hide all the objects that this track contains. You can also put objects on different tracks manually. Let me show you how. Say we have this mesh of a cube in our scene. To put this object on a separate track, you first need to select the object and with the object selected, click this button here to add a new track. Let's call it cube and press OK. And we can see that a new track has appeared in the tracks menu and now we can easily hide it by checking the box under the eye icon. You can also hide the objects using a hotkey. That is also a very quick and easy way to do that. For example, in this scene we have a box and a character mesh. Let's hide the cube by selecting the object first and then pressing V on your keyboard to hide it. A quick note, you could still see the object while it's being selected. You can always use the outliner to navigate to your object. And to make it visible again, press the hotkey Alt V. Now, when we were hiding tracks, we were able to hide parts of the character's body. You can achieve that manually by hiding the corresponding joints. Let's select all the joints of the arm and press V to hide them. This way, you can hide any parts of the character's body. And you can press Alt V to make all the hidden objects visible again. Something to note here is that while the objects are hidden, other controllers may still affect their behavior. Here with a hand, for example, so we pose it in a specific way and then hide it. Let's also hide the auto-posing controllers as well. Now, if I move the character's body, it still should affect the position of the hand. Now, when we make everything visible again, we can see that the position of the arm has changed. To avoid that, you can set the FK behavior to the points. To do that, go to the point controller mode, select all the points of the arm. Now in the object properties, go to point IK FK settings and change the behavior to FK. Now if we hide the arm and continue to animate the character, you will see that the position of the arm will not change because setting it to FK makes it follow the controllers of the rest of the body. However, this behavior may be useful for some particular kinds of animation. But to revert the changes that we've made, select all the points of the arm and in the object properties, set the behavior back to IK. You can also hide objects from the object properties menu. To adjust the visibility settings, select the object and in the object properties, under basic, you will find three settings to control the visibility. Set it to invisible for the objects that you wish to hide for good. The object will only be visible when selected. May be useful for objects you're not going to be using a lot in the scene. Now let's set the second cube to hidden. The difference is that we can make it show again by using the hotkey Alt V unlike the other cube that we've set to invisible. And the only way to bring that object back into the scene is to select it in the outliner and set it to visible. And lastly, let's talk about view modes. There's a number of view modes in Cascadeur that have been preset to display and make active certain groups of objects. 
So going between them, you can quickly display different rig elements, joins, meshes, what have you. And you can make custom adjustments by right clicking on any of them. There's one particular point I'd like to make about always show selected objects here. This parameter is on by default and what it means is that you will always see the objects you've selected even if you switch between the different view modes. In most cases it may prove very useful. But if this option is disabled, you'll still be able to see the manipulators for the objects that you have selected, but the objects themselves will not be visible. And that's it. So thanks for watching and see you next time.